Okay. Woo! Y'all. Get in here, get in here, get in here. I'm so sorry. How about I started the live and I had to run to the little girl's room, child. My bladder said not today. My bladder was not cooperating with me today. And I had to run and take care of that. How y'all doing? It's so good to see everybody. Happy Friday. Today is Friday, right? I didn't lose a day. It's Friday. Okay. TGIF, TGIF. I had to look to make sure because y'all know I get a day wrong. Sure will. I need y'all to come in here. Hit the like button. Mm -hmm. Put your like number in the chat. Yes, I do. And then we're going to talk about what's going on because things are happening. Mm -hmm. It's been an interesting day. The morning started off very, very interesting. Um, child, I don't know whether Candace always got fired, quit, or whatever, but apparently the beefing she's been doing with her boss man over there to the Daily Mail has reached its crescendo, as I put in the description to this video, it has truly reached its crescendo. And now, um, this is what it is. Miss Thing is not working there. We don't know where she's going. We do know she has the following. Um, it's gotten to be a little interesting. Gotten to be a little interesting. My sister on the phone said, I forgot. She said, don't forget to announce Mike Tyson fight coming up. Yeah, um, we're gonna have to pray for brother Paul. Brother, um, what's his name? What's his name? I know his last name, Paul, whatever his first name is. Um, we're gonna have to pray for him and his family and his mama if she's still here among us, uh, amongst the living. Um, yeah, because I don't know why anybody would agree to fight Mike Tyson. So, yeah, that's something too. Mm -hmm. And then we got the RHOP season eight reunion trailer that has come out. Um, giving us a little bit of a sneak peek, a little bit of a preview of what we're in for with the season eight reunion of RHOP. Interesting. There were some interesting um, inclusions and there were some interesting exclusions. And by exclusions, I mean folks that wasn't there. Y'all can guess probably who wasn't there. Mm hmm But we're going to talk about it. Let me greet everybody who in the room before I start running my mouth. Magdalene, hey, sis. Happy Friday. Kiko, hi. Thank you for being like number one. I appreciate you. Miss Thelma says she got number two. Hey, girl. Jen Bunny is number three. All right, all right. All right. She says she couldn't wait for the live. Well, girl, we here. Carrie Amuneke, sis, is here, and she's number six. So is Vintage. 1970 y'all hit it at the same time we got a birthday today we're supposed to be celebrating our sister leah aries okay because it's her birthday all right all right y'all know that cash app is the only means we have a pin and that good dollar on the shirt so make sure y'all show love spam the chat with happy birthdays happy birthday sis we love you we do magdalene is number seven i appreciate it trina taylor hey girl how you doing all right. Glad to see you. Happy Friday. Kelly Harper is here. Hey, Kelly. How are you? Mm hmm We got he he l e l in the house and DS. I love when y'all pop in back to back because y'all be clowning in here back to back. Okay. Thank you for being like number eight. Katrina Taylor is number 13. All right. Tandra for real. Hey, boo. How you been doing? Wait, I missed you. She's number 12. All right. All right, God's anointed daughter is in the house. They always give her crazy numbers. They gave her number 33 already. Okay, it's snowing in upstate New York. Jesus. Hey, well, I'm glad that ain't happening down here. I used to like the cold, but you know the way my arthritis is set up. Praise the Lord. I'm so grateful that I'm not in the snow because that hurts. That really hurts. Hey, happy to be happy. Thank you for being number 16. Happy Friday. Oh, my days. Hello, lady. How are you? Thank you for being 18. Dr. J. Carmen San Diego in the house. She's number 21. We got Debbie Garcia. As long as we got a Debbie, we can talk about housewives. It's legal. She's number 20. I thank you. All right. Jenny Patterson is number 19. I'm glad you're here. Fresh Strawberries is in the house. Hey, boo. My beautiful and gorgeous sis, Nisi Rose, made it in. Happy Friday. Our Ghanaian bombshell is number 27. Don't forget it. Okay. 
we got my good my good sis miss gardner 57 is here thank you for being 27 she says she working and listening but we glad you got us in your earphones while you doing your thing malaya lachelle see i told you i was gonna get it right thank you for being number 29 x thank you for being 30 you and dv y'all hit it at the same time good to see you all right all right who else we got up in here leah aries the birthday girl is number 29 Say so she had to pull over out the traffic. I sure hope you pulled over before you went to um, typing and stuff. Don't be typing and driving. Jake Paul, that's his name. That's the young man that we're going to need to order a case of chicken and some sodas for. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, we're going to need to order some chicken and sodas. Maybe we can send some wings over, some hot and spicy wings over from Publix and some funeral sodas. C. Mays, thank you for being number 36. She says she be right back. She's going to catch us on the replay. Okay, I feel you. Clyde Jones in the house. Hey, Clyde. Happy Friday. Thank you for being 35. I appreciate you. All right, Miss Kaiser. So say it's in the house. You didn't get your notification, but you made it. You made it. Okay. Somehow you made it. Yolanda Franklin is 35. Hey, sis, Ms. Kaiser Sosa is 38. Koku is here and number 38 as well. How are you, lovely? It's good to see you. We got Deborah Harris in the house. Hey, sis. All right. You got to listen fast. I know that's right. I'm going to see if I can talk fast. Hey, Candy R, how are you? It's always a pleasure to see you. D. Saratinas is in the house. All right. Thank you so much, D, for being here. And thank you for being number 18. I appreciate you. Anissa Michelle is here. Happy Friday. Thank you for being number 40. You on the train heading to see your coach. Babe. Oh, why are you so fast? Why are you so fast? I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> hey, Mr. James, we missed you. Where you been? What you been up to? I'm glad you're number 38. Glad you're here. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Lovable Lisa that made it in the chat. All right. All right. Happy Friday, number 44. I like it. I like it. So y'all get in here, honey. We got gossiping to do. Mary, oh, is this my girl Miriam? Yes, it is Miriam Sanfleur. Hello, gorgeous. How are you? Good to see you. So look, listen, listen, listen. What was going on today? What was going on today? Lord, you know I got my phone because my sister be on here texting me crazy stuff. All right. Oh, that's so sweet. Wait, 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 wait. Let me send a heart back. My sis, Miss Gardner, sent me a cash app. That's my first support of the whole day, and I appreciate you. I do. Oh, did I send it back? I think I did. Okay, now I got it. I'm so happy. Thank you. I sent my heart. I sent my heart, sis. I appreciate you. Okay, mm -hmm. LaPriest, we glad you made it, sis. Glad to see you. But yeah, I got my phone because y'all don't know. Y'all know my sister liable to send me anything. Um, I did mention how you been, LaPriest. I did mention that it was some, you know, exclusions from the RHOP reunion. There were some exclusions. We're going to get into that first. Let's just do that first before I have a little sniggle. Not no heavy sniggle, but a light sniggle with this mess with Candy Owens because Candace Owens, because this is a sniggling occasion. Like, child, they in fighting over there. Okay. But while we talking about, um, hey, Catherine Bennett, she number 46. All right, I'm glad you're here too. Shani, thank you for being 53. I appreciate it. Who is like number 70? Who got it? Button, button, who's got the button? Okay. So look, there were exclusions. There were exclusions. Now, my sister said that the malt liquor mongoose was unfortunately there. Um, I'm going to just explain that because if I have to suffer through that, so do you all. Um, Y'all recall that the necromancer was selling sparkling wine. Remember, she was calling it champagne and claiming to be taking her prenatal vitamins in the morning 
with champagne and then we find out that this girl is selling sparkling wine my sister d- deduces she she has de- she's deduced that that is malt liquor okay hey cool gamer hey shanda thank you for being 56. so she's deduced that this is malt liquor and we all know that i have said on occasion and i stand by that the necromancer does resemble that she bears a strong resemblance to ricky ticky tabby i stand by it it maybe it's the wigs so now my sister has resorted to calling this lady the malt liquor mongoose so you know just so y'all know okay since I have to suffer through these text messages, <laughs> y'all gonna get some of these. I don't read y'all a lot of stuff she say. I'm just gonna tell you that I don't. I don't. I wouldn't. I can't. But some of these things, we're gonna share this together. We in this together, okay? So yeah, she was indeed there. And it was a mess. So you know I've got my notebook. Mm-hmm. Hey, Mood Makers Home Decor. <laughs> Mood makers say it's fitting for her. I ain't studying you. Y'all crazy. <laughs> y'all are crazy. Look, and that's another reason why I'm sharing because some of y'all just as crazy as her. Okay. So th- that's just what that is. That's just what that is. So listen, notebook in hand. So let's talk about this um RHOP season eight reunion trailer, shall we? You know, I call it a sneak peek. I saw some people say trailer. Um, DVC, I look forward to your sister's message, your sister's text messages. Listen, we don't, we never know what she might say. I cannot be held responsible. That's why I don't read y'all most of that. But y'all had to hear that one because it it almost made me gag. Um, and then she sent one of the little gifts over with a rat drinking for loco. So this is where we are. This is where we are. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button, okay? Put your like number in the chat. Miss Weedy Poo, thank you so much for being 56. You and Shanda hit it at the same time, all right? Um, Make sure y'all put your like number in the chat. Make sure you're hitting your engagement button, the circle with the emoji. Send bubbles up as many as you can. Let the people know we're in here. Let them know we gossip when we engage. We doing our thing, okay? Share this video in case somebody else might want to gossip with us. Mm-hmm. Because that would be pretty cool. Also, hmm, also, just so you know, okay, make sure y'all are greeting everybody. We keep our comments about the people on the screen, not about each other. No personal attacks, insults, or comments will be tolerated at all. And I mean at all, okay? Because y'all know Nitra's cool, Big Sis is cool, Auntie cool, whatever y'all call me. But we don't do disrespect. We don't do the insults and stuff that will get you up out of her. And we don't want you up out of her. We want you in her. Okay. All right. Shout out to my Memphis folks. I had to steal that from them. I like the, I like the way they say her. It makes me happy. I like it. But yeah, up in here though, if y'all want to stay up in here, you got to be respectful. So let's treat everybody kind. Let's treat everybody the way we want to be treated. All that good stuff. If this is your first time here, please let us know in the chat by telling us it's my first time or by putting FTL for first time live so we can welcome you personally and make sure your like numbers in the chat so I can thank you personally because I truly appreciate your like. I do. Your like means something to me. It means something to me. Now, other creators might not want to thank you for it so they don't ask you to do it, but I'm asking you because it means something to me and I want to say thank you, okay? Personally, for you liking my video because that means something to me. Mood makers, thank you for being number 60. My girl Prognosis is here, the lady with the glowing complexion. Thank you for being 61. All right, all right. All about Eve. Girl, where you been? How you been doing? Mm. Thank you for being number 62. I appreciate it. Angela Davis, hello, ladybug. Thank you for being 61. I appreciate it. Shannon, what you say? You say only the disrespectful ones have to be said on this channel. Yeah, just don't, you know, there's no reason to act ugly. We can be sweet to each other. We ain't got to do that. Mm -mm. We ain't got to never do that. Wani, she's number 62. Hey, boo, how you been? Nikita T. Hey, gorgeous. Thank you for being 56. You ain't that late, baby. We just getting into it. We just getting into it. So like I said, if this is your first time from me to you, welcome. 
please let us know in the chat by indicating this your first time or saying FTL for first time live. If y'all see someone in the chat and I'm running my mouth and I don't get to greet them, please greet them for me. Let's make sure everybody feels welcome. Nobody feels tolerated, okay? Ain't no need to ever be rough around here. Now, y'all can crack a joke. We do have a reflection corner. It may cost you a good 30 seconds to think about what you just typed, but that's all that's going to happen. Let, you know, here lately, they've been serving refreshments and snacks, um, passing out hand fans and all in the reflection corner. It's a lovely place. So many people go. Okay. Um, KK. Hey, KK. How you doing? Gossip News is in the house. Good to see you. Thank you for being number 62. You graduating this summer. Oh, we're so proud of you, my, my baby, my sweet nephew. I'm so glad. KK, thank you for being number 69. I appreciate it. So look, let us get into the gossip. Oh, as we show back to. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. I need to respond to somebody real quick. All right, so here we go, here we go. Love my sister say the hotel reflection corner. Apparently y'all have turned the reflection corner into a hotel. So um, those of you who are checking into the reflection corner, please enjoy your stay, all right? Let us know if we can bring you any fresh towels or if you need room service, all right? So let's get into it. So we saw, oh Lord, Gossip News say he brought ribs and fries, Lord. Help us, Father. Look, we saw the reunion trailer for season eight's reunion for RHOP. Now, at first glance, at first glance, hey, hello, beautiful people. Thank you for being number 71. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who's number 80? Who got 80? So look. At first glance on that reunion trailer, I'm going to say this. It appears to me, it appears to me, <laughs> y'all done already started, that the reunion is more entertaining than the entire season. Just the clips, unless those were the only entertaining moments and they just compiled them all into a clip. Um, Trina say is one. At the hotel in the laundry or the lobby, have mercy, Lord. I, I don't, I we don't want Juan at hotel reflection, we don't want him over here. Okay, Juan do strange things and try to bring his friends. Uh, BB, thank you for being number 75. Okay, so it's very interesting to me. Okay, I, it looks like it's more interesting than the entire season that we just endured because we endured this season like i'm waiting for it to be over and we still got another episode to go hey u.s army brad y'all she said hit the like button now thank you for being like number 74 glad to see you boo velda sorrentino that's my sis so um this is what i don't understand how is it how is it that the clip from the reunion could be more entertaining than the entire season somebody should explain that to me so let's talk about all the little bits and pieces we got just from this clip just from the clip there was bits and pieces bits and that gum pieces baby yes we struggling malaya we struggling Struggling getting through this. Carrie say, I think Andy over them not working through their problems like he was giving them a warning at the top. 
Yeah, I feel like it was that. And I also feel as though Andy was pandering to social media. If y'all watch Andy Cohen, the, the white powder ranger, he does that a lot. He wait to see what, what y'all are saying, like, pervasively online, like what's a constant online, what's constantly being said, consistently being said. And then he panders to that once he gets in front of that camera. That's what he does. He did it last season with Robert, thinking that if he pandered to what y'all were saying on social media, that y'all would get over the fact that she did way worse than Kenya Moore and Kenya was fired and she was allowed to stay. I'm still not going to shut up about it. I still feel as though if Robert, I don't give nothing to the show, Dixon can, can keep her job after what she did, then Kenya Moore is owed all of her money for the, for the season that she was fired with interest. And I stand by that. You fired the black lady. The non-black woman did far worse and put her story behind a paywall on Patreon and she was able to keep her job. And that's the problem. Um, Jim Bunny said, you got to treat Juan like he on probation, weekly check in to see what job he applied to. Yeah, he needs to um do that like he filing for unemployment check. Like at this point, I want to see who he applied to. Because at this point, I honestly, personally, I want to see Juan work somewhere. Now, that's just what I'm saying. He's got two children and a woman that he pretending to be with. The, the two children alone, he needs to work somewhere. I don't care if it's digging ditches. I don't care if it's making toilets. I don't care if it's if it's tree cutting with the Arbor service or something. I don't care. Juan needs to work. So while we talking about Juan, before we start digging into um the notes and the little tidbits that I picked up from this um preview, Juan was conspicuously absent. I did not see Juan. I'm going to look back at this clip really quick while I'm talking to y'all to make sure. Um, Andy did not say their job was on the line. Andy said that he wanted to set an intention that they were going to work on moving forward. Everybody that was going to work on moving forward. Now, that's what he said. Okay. Now, the Powder, the powder Ranger did not say that. He did not say that. And we always tell the truth. Okay, over here, we're going to always tell the truth and shame the devil. We're going to lead a line to them heathens. Okay, we, we uh, hopefully over here, I don't have a bunch of heathens because we're not going to do no line and no signifying. Rochelle, thank you for being number 79, sis. Yes, I didn't see him there. I didn't see him there. Let me uh, let me go back and rewatch this clip. Y'all know I believe in trying to tell the truth. I don't believe in telling no tales on nobody if I can help it. Okay, so let me go back and look at it one more, one more again, to make sure I got it right. You know, I believe that I do, but I just want to, I want to be double sure that I have it right. Yeah. So in the picture. What I'm seeing is there's somebody with everybody but her and um, Rings, Giselle. These are the only two people that ain't got a man sitting behind them when the men's is out there. Hey, Stoner Gaming, how you doing, boo? Koku say Andy is trash. He should have been checked next seasons ago. She's She's the one not moving on. Hello, good night. Should have. Should have. Oh, we gonna get into it. I promise you. No, the necromancer's man is behind her. I'm looking at the picture right now. I'm just looking at the picture right now. It's a man behind everybody. Oh, I'm sorry. And Ashley. Because um, Mr. Burns ain't showing up, ain't showing up either. Montgomery Burns is not coming to that reunion. That's that's just not happening. Okay. But we're going to get into that. But yeah, Robert's, Robert's um, would-be husband is not there. Because still nobody ain't been able to find that marriage license for me. And until you do, that ain't nobody's husband. I don't know who husband he is, but we know who husband he ain't until I see some paperwork. Okay? 
because we know they likes the lie. And the fact that you showed us a cock and bull, cock and mammy shot, or y'all supposedly having a ceremony, don't mean nothing either. Either because we seen Yandy with her messy behind do a fake ceremony only to find out that that ain't none of her husband either. Okay? So now, that was the exclusion that had me shook it because I said, now, he can't even say he working at this point and he ain't show up because he ain't working because where he working at? Where is he working at? Unless she came on this reunion now, we don't know. Let's give it a benefit of the doubt. Unless Robert Dixon came on this and him reunion to tell us and announce the happy news that Juan done got out of job, I'm going to need him to be sitting behind her with that puffy bob she got to support this girl because you clearly spending her money, Juan. And I know he probably ain't gonna never see this, but I'm still gonna put it out there because I want somebody to repeat it to him. You spend, you still spending her money, Juan. She buying food, you eating it. You wiping your booty with her toilet tissue and you laying on some of this girl's sheets in her house fighting over the moat control because she done already told us why she playing with nasty toys. Okay? So the least that Juan can do is show up and support this girl while you spending her money. And I stand on that. I don't like her. I can't stand her. It's very few people in the world that I can just look at and just say, I can't stand her. Tracy Lashley say, Tracy Lashley say, as Nene would say, show me your employment papers. Yes. The hell? I can't, I promise you I can't stand Robert. I can't stand Robert Dixon. Like I say, very few people I feel like that about. But she's one of the people that I would love for her every time she stand up to go anywhere to fall, trip and fall and bust her chin on the pavement. Like, I don't like her. But I don't like a man taking advantage of a woman either. I don't care how desperate she is. This is not a good look. And you raising boys, Juan, and they need to know that men are supposed to work. Okay? Hey, Callie. Say, has Juan ever been to a reunion? Yes, the last one he came to. Karen say he was up there talking about threesomes and hugging her till he almost popped her implant. Hey, Latasha Black. Mm-hmm. He, he, L-E-L say, even if he got a job, he always got an excuse not to be there. He would if he wanted to. Ain't that what they say? It is, because it's true. It's true. Lord Gossip News say, where is Jason? Child Jason with whatever woman he, that he actually go with. Mm-hmm. Yes, he is eating that girl food at her house. Lord, she say eating the boy's snacks. Mm. Nisa said, bet Robert will say one stay back to look after her franchise. <laughs> I'm not reading it. <laughs> I'm not reading it. Yes, yes, yes. Put all the bills out there, Jim Bunny. Running up the girl water bill. Running up the light bill. Yes. The gas bill, too. Kelly say that should be enough to get Robin fired. Candace, Wendy, and Karen can't get away with not having their husband show up. Hello. Hello. Lord. The con I, I don't even know how to read this stuff. She say he eating her food but eating somebody else's groceries. Yes, bust her chin. That bust her chin. I can't stand her. I cannot stand her. Hey, my argument is thank you for being number 84. I appreciate you. But yes, yes, this is what's going on. And y'all, she just sent herself to the corner. Look at God. So, anyway, all that then went on. Let's get into what was said. Let's get into what was said. So and to come with this talking about, you know, he he want to be intentional. 
He wants to be intentional. And, and him being intentional is that he wants, um, what do you say? How you said it? He want them to all focus on moving forward at the reunion, going to move forward. And it sounds good. It sounds like he's been listening to what people saying on social media about them not having resolution. He's been listening to the bloggers. He's been listening to us commentators and everything. And that's great that you're listening, Andy. That's that's great. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's one thing to say you want people to move forward. But when you all who are in authority over there, do not hold people accountable to the same degree. You cannot expect the other the other parties involved who have been mistreated and treated inequitably to simply move forward as though no offense has taken place. That's not how it works. In order to move forward, somebody got to say what I've done or what has happened is not right. It's not fair. I should not have done it. It was categorically wrong. I'm not going to do that moving forward. I can acknowledge that I've wronged you moving forward, but you don't just get to mistreat somebody and then say move forward. Cause what that sounds like is what clear people have been telling black folks in America on this plantation for a little while now, you know how they do us, you know? Yeah. I mean, I understand about, you know, the cotton and the tobacco and the rice and the sugar cane and stuff and the, the whips and the, you know, the beatings and the lynchings and the killings and, you know, the terror, the, the acts of terror and the human trafficking, but y'all just move forward. That ain't how that work. That's why that ain't happened because we can't move nowhere until you address the wrongness that went on. You can't tell these ladies to move forward and shut up about colorism when y'all steady exhibited it. You can't tell, neither can you tell somebody whose husband done been lied on, you need to move forward when the person who told the lies ain't never acknowledged like yeah i was wrong to say that i was wrong to tell that lie all she did was say i was wrong to say sneaky link but she still ain't acknowledged that that was devious and that was wrong instead what she did and i'm talking about giselle what what she did instead this season was to double down and say he made me go in a hotel room girl ain't nobody made you do a goddamn thing because we all saw on the on the reunion in question which was the one where Nicki Minaj she was on there or Nico, and he was talking to his wife and we watched you but into a conversation between a husband and a wife for him to tell you i'll tell you about it later y'all remember that put a one in the chat if y'all remember that duchess down to say meanwhile one was on the side of town talking about her could run robin's bits how he could run robin's business it was on the other side of the town writing his wife a fifty thousand dollar check to cover her business budget girl listen it's levels it's levels but i want y'all to put a one in the chat if y'all remember that because we're gonna deal with each item on the agenda one by one nisi rose you remember david garcia you remember i'm glad because y'all know we about to go back to my favorite place sing it with me in the chat where we going where we going family where are we going? Y'all know where we going. Where we going? Back down memory lane. We going right back down. I saw a photograph. <clears throat> it kind of made me laugh. Because, baby, we going fast. That was that same reunion with Onika. Has she, remember, she had came on there as the guest host or whatever. A lot of us was counting on her to ask the questions. What Andy wasn't going to ask. And remember, she had asked Candace the thing, and it did look a little bit like they was being funny and bullying and pushing the girl, like they're going to try to shame her and embarrass her for wanting to have a singing career for real, okay? And she did sing, and she held her note. She did her thing. Hey, Vita from Denver, thank you for being 84. And so during the break time, we saw Candace and Chris looking like they, you know, they felt some type of way. And Giselle tried to butt into that conversation, like, why you upset? Why, why you upset? Because she did fine. Y'all remember that? Because y'all know Giselle talked like a slave. She talked like she 12 years a slave every day of her life. Why you upset? I mean, she did fine. I don't know why you, like, what, what's going on? Are you upset? Why would you be upset? Y'all remember that? And Chris had to turn around at her and say, I'll tell you about it later. Y'all hold on.
Hey, mama's baby. I'm just gonna show you what's going on. <laughs> oh, that what you fixing? Girl, my mama ruined you. You know I'm on live, but I answered anyway. Oh, my bad. I didn't see you. I'll talk to you. Okay, good. All right, bye. Listen, child, my baby done called me on video. Let me tell you about this heifer, and then we're going to get back to this. She gonna call me because she done fixed some pork and beans and weenies. Y'all know old people ruin children teaching them stuff like that. If y'all is grandparents, don't do that to your grandbabies. My, my mama did that to this girl. And now as big as she is, she'll still go fix pork and beans and cut weenies up in there. Don't teach y'all grandchildren stuff like that. Don't do that. Because mama did that to this girl and this is what she do. And she think it's funny. That's why she called for me to see. Mm -hmm. So this is a PSA to the grandmamas out there. Don't y'all do that. Don't do that to these children. Don't be teaching them how to eat beanie weenies and vanna sauces and all that stuff. Don't teach them that. Don't teach them that because mama taught her that. Here she go. There she go right there. She can tell you about it. She like number 95. Peanut has entered the chat. Okay. Now she's talking about it. it's a delicacy. Got dog on shame. Mm-hmm. So listen. And then that's when Chris went and met up and talked to her. And then she talking about he made her go in the room. Girl, you was trying to get in them, in them married people business. You was. And then turned around and flipped it and lied on that man. So Andy can say move forward, but how people going to move forward when y'all still lying and playing? Shannon say that's the bomb meal from back in the day. Leave that baby alone. And let her eat her poke and beans. Y'all terrible. Y'all is terrible. I'm trying to put a stop to this. <laughs> say, child, I love them beans and weenies. I ain't stating you. I ain't H at Vita, but I'm still drinking my water. Thank you for being 96, just me, Cheryl. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all off the chain. Y'all off the chain. I know. Thank you for being number 96. But yes, so Andy telling them to move forward. How? How? Which way now? Which way you gonna do that? Okay, the baby say, y'all, please like this video. Okay? Now, listen. <laughs> Yolanda say, Giselle, and her seven necks stay lying and conniving. Listen. Oh, my gosh. Go check on that corner. Just go check on it. Because I, I heard it was okay, but I just want to make sure. Y'all go check on it. Okay? <laughs> I don't need this kind of laughter. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Anyway, hey, Delicia, this view. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being 117. I appreciate you. I do. I do. Wait a minute. Oh, Miss Kaiser, so say, sent me a cash app. That's so sweet. I love you, sis. That is the sweetest ever. And it was a thank you. She said, thank you for all you do. Them thank yous mean a lot to me. Don't like, don't y'all think for one minute a thank you don't get to me, a thank you gets to me. Because y'all know y'all are mamas, y'all are wives, y'all know we don't get a lot of thank yous, so I'm not going to be a water bag but i appreciate you so yeah andy can like take that and shove it where the sun don't shine he can shove that you know right and i mean right on up there where the sun don't shine that's where i want him to put it and don't miss it just get get it get in the crease get in the crevices because that's where it that's where it needs to go it needs to go where the sun don't shine okay so then we find out, and this is in no particular order. It's mostly in order, but it's some things out of order because I had to listen to it a few times to make sure I got all the points. So, once again, your girl has been vindicated. And by your girl, I mean me. That's my boo. Thank you again so much. That was so sweet of you. Thank you. Um listen listen i have been vindicated 
Did I not tell you all that Ashley wasn't leaving Rob, uh, Michael? Did I not tell y'all from way last season that this was nothing but a storyline and a way to keep Michael from having to film? Didn't I tell y'all that? Didn't I tell y'all that right before it was supposed to be an actual divorce that they was going to work it out magically? Didn't I tell y'all that? So she's sitting up on these people's stage talking about, I still love him and I rub his feet every night. Baby, the look on the grand dame's face when she said, I rub his feet every night. I said, he. Foot of corpse? I, mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't want to know what an undead foot smell like. I just, it's not a good image in my head. It didn't give me a good image. It didn't give me, you know, I didn't get the warm fuzzies. Hey, Tanish. I didn't get the warm fuzzies. But I, just trying to get a mental picture of her retching down there. I mean, retching way down there to grab the foot of Nosferatu to put it in her lap. To, whoo, hey, bless it, Lord. So I, I'm 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 vindicated. I told y'all. I told it y'all. The beautiful Bianca Edwards is in the house. Hey boo, listen what I'm telling you. I told y'all she wasn't leaving that man. All y'all kept getting all hyped up. People was having whole streams talking. Oh, see she ain't gonna get no money. She trying to go dig. She ain't gonna get no money. I told y'all wasn't no money to get in no divorce that wasn't happening. Koku says she ain't never believe it either. You could easily tell when she lied. I'm telling y'all, I tried to, Koku, I tried to tell him. Wouldn't nobody believe me. Shannon say touching his vampire feet nasty. Looked like the feet from the Lost Boys movie when they was hanging. Oh, from them branches? Probably. He probably do got buzzer hooks on them things. Hey, Nene, Ashley, thank you for being 104. Mm-hmm. Yep, I'm not surprised. We know Ashley, like, enjoys a little mortician role play not the mortician role play jesus is that where we're going with this mortician role play lord needs to say who volunteer to massage sandpaper i don't know i don't know listen i tried to tell y'all nobody ain't want to believe me ain't nobody want to believe me Y'all hit the like button. Thumbs up this video, please, and thank you. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Lord Ray Ray say, not a talent toe. Yes, the talent toe. Me done reach down there, grab that thing, and, and, and hit her artery. But that's what she did. Hey, if she like it, I love it. That is her husband. Okay? Now, I, Ashley, I'm not telling you not to love your husband okay that's the if, if you believe that that is the man that the lord sent to you girl love on your husband reach down there and if you pray right if you pray right i mean you the fervent fervent right fervent prayer fervent righteous prayer he he, he won't even hit no talent he won't even hit now it won't happen i'm telling you it, you'll be safe Bianca Edwards sent me a cash out. Oh, thank you. Let me send my heart back. Hold on, hold on. Why the thing won't let me do it? I want to send it. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay. But yes, honey. So I listen, Ashley. I'm not. I'm not picking, girl. Dash your husband, rub them feet, or get on down there and rub them feet because that's the man that you say the Lord done sent to you. And if you believe that that's the man the Lord done sent to you and that is your husband, girl, you go, go rub them, girl. Get in there. Get in there, Ashley. Hold to God's unchanging hand and hold to Michael's undead foot. I mean, you all to hold to that foot. Mm -hmm. Yes, girl, you better do it, Ashley. So I've been vindicated and, and I'm with it. I'm with it. I like it. If you like it, I love it, honey. I don't get in married people business. Koku says she playing that man's. Koku 
gonna get in that corner. <laughs> Y'all done went straight Suki Hana up in here. DS say she should use bleach uh, on the black mold feet. I'm not gonna tell that woman what to do with her husband foot. That is her husband. She can have him all to herself. Ain't nobody fighting her for that man. Lord, Miss Kaiser, so says say powder feet, Lord. Mm -mm. Mm, I don't know, but I'm not. I'm not getting into married people business. I'm just vindicated because I knew she wasn't leaving that man. I knew that. I feel so much better now. Let's talk about what else we finds out. Now, one thing that we see. Gossip news, spell it backwards. Spell it backwards, baby. Okay? Because we know, y'all know, we don't do no cussing in auntie chat. But spell it backwards and you'll, you'll get why she in that corner. Okay? Um, We also see that basically it looks like they about to try to play this sympathy thing with Giselle again. I do sympathize that your daddy is dead. I do. My daddy gone too. All right. And this is not to even speak on Daddy Graves' character. We all know he was a rampant colorist, um, very anti-black and all that good stuff. But that was her colorist anti-black daddy. And I'm sure he meant something special to her. And we've seen snippets of Daddy Graves be very entertaining. And you could tell that she had a closeness with her daddy. So I'm not touching that too much. Um because I do understand I'm human. Okay. <laughs> Woo! And there go Phillips granddaughter in the chat. Praise God. Hey, Duke girl, thank you for being 107. So, anywho, I was like, why are we doing the sympathy play? Like, we, and she's like, I was there when he took his last breath. I'm like, Lord. Okay, Giselle. Okay, but I do not, what I do not want to see is production try to take us down this road where we got to be so caring and so kind to her because her daddy did. Karen lost both her parents and Giselle was absolutely horrible. She was disgusting. She had no care, no concern, no empathy. She had, I mean, she was terrible to Karen after both of her parents died. So I don't want to see them go down that road where we got everybody supposed to be bending over backwards because old poor Giselle. No, she really didn't want to talk about it on the show. He got sick while they were filming. And when production tried to ask her about it, she was like, I'll talk about it later. So she really gave none of it. Um, it's cool to make mention of it. I think it's okay to acknowledge that that happened because, you know, whether I like you or not, I can understand. Like I said about the whole parent, all that parent, losing parent stuff, I wish I didn't understand, but I do. Um, So, yeah, I was like, mm, let's not go down that road, but I believe they're going to try to. Um, We got a very interesting take from the necromancer, Necropolis, Necktie, and then tuck it. Nincompoop. <laughs> Not a lot. That one. So she tries to accuse Wendy of icing her out. She tries to accuse Dr. Wendy of icing her out of that group. <laughs> Not only was that interesting, it was hilariously stupid. This girl, I'm going to go on record and saying that this girl is even dumber than Mia. That's saying a lot. That's saying a lot. Let's talk about all the reasons why they're stupid. When we first got nincompoop on our screen, when they spoke to her, she was friendly. She even corrected the other people at the table for mispronouncing the girl's name. To which she responded, it's okay. Let them call me whatever they want. They're American. <laughs> she then goes on to spread horrible rumors 
and call this woman's mama a witch and make attacks against her husband. Like she acted like a whole mess. I'm trying to find a nice way of saying what she acted like and y'all know I'm struggling. But she acted a mess. Wendy left her alone. Wendy did not follow her up for any type of attention or a moment. Wendy simply left her alone. I don't see where she was iced out. She was clearly interacting with Giselle, Robert, Mia, Ashley, even Candace, and Karen. So she was able to interact with everyone. One person cannot ice you out of a group. What we did see, on the other hand, was them attempt to pull an ice out on Wendy and Candace because they had more numbers. There was no ice out of a group. Then how were you iced out of a group? By one person. Is Wendy a group by herself? Wendy's not even a large lady like that. So how could she be considered a group? And which group did she ice you out of, necrophilia? Did she ice you out of her mama's house? Did she ice you out of her social circle outside of this cast? Maybe she needs to give us more background, input, something. Because what the hell did Wendy ice you out of? I was confused. How do you attack someone called a mama a witch, call them a female dog, make attacks toward her husband, um, accuse her mama of saying something that I, I still don't believe she said with no proof other than there was a conversation? We had a conversation. So on a conversation that there's no transcript, no recording, You call this lady a witch with no proof, ran with it, kept running with it, insulted her, cussed at her, all this, all, I mean, all of the things. And this lady did nothing but leave you alone. How did she ice you out? So it's giving that Nantucket is still going to get on the reunion and try to be a victim and pretend that Wendy's doing something to her. When we saw Wendy agree to sit down with her and at least drink water and ask her point blank, what did I? do to you to which she got no answer at all so i thought that was a little interesting so we're gonna get more of her still trying to make fetch happen and somehow i just i don't think it is i don't think it is um the next thing that i wanted to point out was um i enjoyed watching giselle try to play victim with candace it was funny i'm just gonna tell you she sat there. Y'all know how she does that 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 look on her face, where she um, where she tries to look like she's angry and she's so serious, and so she she does this hard set on her jaw, like, and so she's telling um, you know, or talking about Candace, and she goes. Just she's, you know, I guess, re repeating the things that Candace has said. Giselle's an imp. Giselle's a devil. Giselle is evil. And we see Candace say, and it's all true. I holler just a smidge. I say, well, I be dang. So if y'all helpers could have went on and talked during the season, we could have had laughs like this. We could have had, as we all know, Giselle don't want to go back and forth with Candace, Wendy, and um, she trying to play nice with Karen. Because she knows that she can't really spar with these ladies on the spot. She ain't got it. But it made me wonder. You had all this time to the reunion to come up with your defense or with your I'm a victim strategy. And that's what you came up with. Something that she would never deny. Something that she can defend. To her, you are evil. To her, you are an imp. To her, you are the devil. So I'm trying to figure out like... Giselle, that's what you came up with. So that was interesting. Um, Andy asked a filthy question, 
but it was in response and it was making reference to something filthy that Robert said while they were having an outing. Y'all remember that when Robert made the statement about imbibing a man's genetic material. Y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all know I'm going to hit you with a euphemism. So act like y'all know what I'm saying. Okay. And so Andy, Andy, the white powder ranger asked the ladies that any of y'all take Robert's advice about imbibing a man's genetic material while at play. I think is about as smutty as I'm willing to get. Mia puts her hands up and like and says that she did. And Andy said, well, who, the DJ? She said he's a radio personality. I said, oh, my gosh. And, and it just, it was so deep to me that she's sitting here on the reunion making jokes. And they're able to joke with her about the man that she was hoeing around with on her husband, of course, albeit with the husband's permission. But during the season, they tried to pretend as though Karen lied on her saying that she was going with a rapper. Hell, Karen gave you more credit than you deserve. Cause it looks like you couldn't catch a rapper. I was, I would, I would have loved to know which rapper was gonna mess with her. Looking like she looking. Um, there are some rappers who have some different types of lifestyles that maybe that would fit into. But I was just wondering which one, and it turns out it was just the radio DJ. Yolanda said, "I believe Mia responded that she took her advice. Yes, she did." Yeah, th th about imbibing a man's genetic material, okay? And I was sitting there, and I'm sitting there like, okay, first of all, <laughs> Evie says she was killing herself to know who was the rapper. I would have loved to know, personally, okay? I wanted I wanted to know, and inquiring minds wanted to know. But um, so Candace got his profession wrong, but she... Not Candace, but Karen got the profession wrong. But Karen obviously did not get the T wrong. Okay. However, I was wondering, like, Andy, why would you ask these married women if they took advice from Robert? If we can all see the way Robert's relationship or lack thereof is playing out, why would anybody who's logical or sane take advice from Robert? Like, what can Robert tell you about keeping a man? Or keeping his attention. Let's just say that. Keeping the man's attention. Because we all know keeping him ain't no, that's not a feat. That's not a flex. But what can Robert tell you about keeping the man's attention who's in your house? Well, gossip news, we all know now. But we didn't know at the time. What can she tell you? So I thought Andy was shady as hell asking that question. Andy say Andy Andy Cohen says and does a whole lot of shady garbage, a whole lot. Um, he he L L said, can you imagine Mia is seeing a whole new man and Gordon still at the reunion? Juan, what's the excuse, child? Now that's the question. Gordon got her back and she is swallowing, oh, imbibing a whole other man's genetic material while at play. And Gordon still showed up for her, knowing all of that. She's saying that all out loud. <laughs> Look at this. I ain't care who the rapper was. I just assumed it was Flavor Flav and kept it pushing. Whew. So yeah, I thought that was pretty gross. But um yeah, Mia says she took the um <laughs> Mia says she took the uh advice. Yeah, Juan absolutely hates Robin. And I, I don't like that because he's still willing to sit in her house and eat her groceries and sit on her on her settee. I don't like it. Now Mia got some paternity issues, y'all. Mia Thornton has paternity issues. Hey, poetic lyrics, y'all. Hit the like button. Mia has some paternity issues. Apparently, that oldest child 
um we don't know who the daddy is now i'm not gonna get into that too much because y'all know i'm a little funny about discussing people's children because i'm a, i'm a little funny about you discussing mine So I'm not going to say too much, but she got paternity issues and the child think one person the daddy, but it might not be the daddy and Gordon up here talking about it. But I heard Gordon defended her a lot at this reunion. So maybe this is what he was defending her about was about that. I don't know. Honestly. Lord, so, somebody get Phil's grandchild. Say, a stripper don't know her baby daddy sounds about right. Somebody get Philip's granddaughter, please. Lord. Miss Kaiser, so say, say Juan is getting back at Robert for the past money situation. He not happy. I understand that. I do. But I don't. I just don't like him sitting in that girl house not working. Coco say, I don't believe none of it. She's something else dragging her kid into this. Yeah, that could be a lie too. But I don't know because Gordon was going along with it. Gordon don't strike me as nobody going to go along with a lie. He don't strike me that way. He could, but I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe she told him she don't know who the baby daddy is and so he believed her. Gossip News say it do sound like a stripper thing. Child, not may as well saying I get around. That used to be my song. I did not get around, but I like that song. Um, Bianca Edwards say, I just hope they aren't using this paternity thing as a storyline because that'll be disgusting if they were. Right. Now, we know Mia don't mind being gross and disgusting, so hopefully that's not what she's doing because that would be awful. Hey, WD Rose says, so Mia and Robert are a new form of life lock. W.D. Rose, I ain't never sent you to the corner, but I'm going to need you to get in there for a good 35 seconds. Um, Hello, beautiful people say, she can't tell me a teetotal thing. Robert, can, Robert can't keep one from hotels and, and wash a rinse to save her marriage. Can't. Ain't. You right. Say, if Robert didn't know he hated her, that's one thing. Yeah, she got to know. That man told her that he that she make his skin crawl, and I'm never forgiving him for that. That's going to stick with me forever. She could be lying to Gordon, too. Yep. And they're definitely trying to smut up the show because that's what Andy like. Andy like smut. That's how he got these lawsuits. Okay. Trina Taylor said Juan wasn't out here cheating and, and monitoring his bank accounts. He probably, be, he probably wouldn't be broke. That's a good point. That's a good point. He gave her access to the money and he was too busy doing his thing and he wasn't watching them. Yes, that is embarrassing for her child to even mention that. That child don't need that to be out there. That should be private business. Okay. So that's just what that was. Um, Say so there was never a hint that Mia had doubts of the son paternity. Right. Then all of a sudden this is out. Like, where did this come from? Right. Boy, y'all y'all keep hotel reflection open um say she can't keep wonder one landria one one landeria from folding women at laundromats oh my yeah mia's definitely fighting to keep her spot she'll drag her churn through the mud to do it she don't care mia is really low mia is low um and that's just that on that that was a lot that was a freaking lot so it looks like that the reunion might actually have way more action in the season which has been painfully long painfully 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 long now we got to get to this candace owens um gossip news say y'all out of snacks one of y'all better go to the corner store yeah evie you right she drug her mama you can't trust her that's true that's true Trina Taylor said, like I said, Mia would have been with Biz Marquis if he was alive. Nothing shocks me about Mia. The problem is Biz wouldn't have took her. I, I don't think Biz would have been with her. I don't, I don't believe that. Yes, Mia is gutter. Straight gutter. 
I don't even think Craig Mack would have had meal. I just don't believe it. I don't. So look, before we get into this Candace Owens thing, because I was, I found it interesting and funny. I have an interesting take. Now, I wanted to talk about this a few days ago, but I kept forgetting. I kept forgetting. Y'all know my mind bad. And I don't want it to be, but it is. Okay? So, listen. Hey, Mac. So, y'all, did y'all see that um, Jonathan Majors is being sued again by that lady? Did y'all see that? Because I did. Mm-hmm. So, the lady. What he ended up in court for, he got found guilty. All of that, all of that. The lady is suing him yet again, and it sounds like the same thing. So I don't know whether this is supposed to be civil. Maybe she's trying to get her um, a severance package. Hey, Cosmic Connections, they end to pay attention to social media, but ignore the outrage of women online over Dr. Jackie's comment. Oh yes, oh yes. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about Candace. But I got to mention this real quick because I got a take on this that I don't know if everybody's going to agree with me, but I got to put it out there because I'm going to burst if I don't. You saw that. Yes. Yeah. I'm glad everybody's seen it. Mm hmm. So. Poetic lyrics. That's exactly what I'm saying. That is exactly what I'm saying. Um. So look, she's suing, and you know a lot of people don't understand how or why she's suing again. You know, after the already going to court, I think the issue is like I said, she needs she wants a cash payment on top of the criminal charges, and my take on this is that she deserves her, her unemployment package. Y'all hear me out on this. From the text messages that Jonathan Majors, Moose, Moose, his lawyer released in the beginning of this mess with her saying, Oh, I never gave my blessing for them to arrest you and like they needed her blessing and I never called them. I never did. Yada, yada, yada. All that demonstrated to me was that this lady was willing to take a punch or two or 10 in order to remain with this man. Okay. So what that says to me, she was an employee. She was willing to remain in the work conditions. Okay. And he wrongfully terminated her employment. That's what it gives. It was wrongful termination. She did not complain about working conditions. She didn't have a problem taking a punch or a strangle, a little, you know, a little chokey choke here and there, a little choke choke here, choke choke there. She didn't mind. And you terminated her employment, sir. That was wrongful termination. And I feel like you leave any job, you get unemployment. She left the job. She got unemployment. It was through no fault of her own. We saw you fire her, sir. You put her in the car. You slammed her down in the car. I don't know if her finger got hurt that night or not. Could be did, could be didn't. But apparently she could take a punch because in the text message, she said, just like before, I never said nothing to nobody and whatever. So she was fine with her working conditions. You slammed her in that car and tried to send her away without her severance package we watched that lady chase you across three counties on foot through, through traffic jaywalking all that trying to get her final paycheck and you did not want to pay this lady so now okay that after it's over she still needs to be paid jonathan get this lady her money now, let me tell you something. Right. Them releasing them texts was wild. Why would you release them texts showing that this girl was okay getting punched, beat up, choked, stomped, all that, and, and she, wasn't, she didn't quit the job? You clearly fired her for no just cause. Okay, let's go over his actual complaints. He couldn't complain that she couldn't take a punch because she could. He couldn't complain that she was not a happy employee. She looked happy to me on them text messages. 
The only complaint we heard was that he was mad at her for not being like Coretta Scott King and Michelle Obama. He wanted this poor little clear girl to do something that was physically impossible. How the hell was she going to be like two strong, intelligent, capable, competent black women? It was impossible. So he wanted her to do something that he did not hire her for. He didn't hire her to be a black lady. But halfway through her employment, he tried to change the terms, hey, Deborah Randall, of her employment, asking her to be a black lady. And then when she didn't know how to magically be a black lady, then you wanted to wrongfully fire this girl slam her down in the car and tried to run off without paying her that's why she was chasing him see that he didn't want to say that in open court but i'm gonna just tell y'all that's the way i took it she didn't know how to magically become a black lady so you fired that girl for no reason off of her job and then ran to keep from paying her and all she was doing when she chased you across three counties was trying to get her final paycheck. That's it. Leads me to believe that the criminal charges didn't even have to happen if you just went on and gave that girl her final paycheck. See, Nisa understand where I'm coming from. Sounds right. He asked her to do something physically impossible. She couldn't do it. He wrongfully terminated her, paid this girl her money, and so we can all move on with our lives. You are currently paying Megan Good a mammy fee. Megan is collecting her mammy fee, pretending to like you. She got to ex- she got to pretend to kiss you in public and all type of stuff. And I never know how horrible that is for Megan. Y'all imagine that you got to pucker up looking at that face and go, "Hey!" So I know Megan getting a pretty penny and a couple of ugly ones too. And you didn't even have to pay Megan a mammy fee if you'd have gave this girl her final paycheck. Now, on the other hand, little Miss Grace, whatever your last name is, baby, I feel like you should have some some uh, amount of that deducted because they have a, a um a website called Glassdoor. Y'all heard of Glassdoor? We all know about Glassdoor. You supposed to go on Glassdoor to get the inside on your prospective employer. Now, we find out after you went to court with him that his other ex-girlfriends that he was tricking on each other with, he was going both of them at the same time. They didn't even know it. And that he was controlling and he was this. Type. And I, I told Peanut, I still don't believe in emotional abuse. She say it's a thing. A lot of y'all say it's a thing. I don't. Um, But they put all that in there. All that in there. And if she had went on Glassdoor and checked her her prospective employer, she would have found out that he was slightly unreasonable controlling. He was going to do some things, going to hurt your feelings, and you, maybe you wouldn't have taken the job. So I feel like she shouldn't get the full pay, but I think she should get at least 90% of her last paycheck from Jonathan Majors. That's my take on it. Okay? All right. Um, Andrew Mack. He, you right. He's not a bad looking dude. He's a terrible looking dude. Absolutely terrible. Mm-hmm. Now on to Miss Candace Owens. Oh, Candace. Let's talk about old Candace, child. Oh, Candace ain't got no job this morning. Mm-hmm. Now this is what we don't know. This is the part we don't know because y'all know I don't believe in lying on nobody. No lying, no signifying. We know she no longer works at the Daily Mail. The I'm not Daily Mail, Jesus, the Daily Wire. I done messed the, the, the name up, all that. I'll fix it later. Y'all know me. I'll fix it later. She ain't got no job. Down to the Daily Wire. Okay? The job to the Y, gone. I don't know, you know, uh, the, the conditions. That she, they that they ended her employment. They um uh, they went and they released on social media that they've ended their relationship. They said that the Daily Wire and Candace Owens have ended their relationship. She tweeted and said, "The rumors are true. I'm finally free." Now, right, Yolanda, he good and terrible. Thank you, thank you. That's accurate. Good and terrible. Mm-hmm. Skin like tree bark. 
a little rough. Hey, E. Davis. So now listen. Let's talk about what led up to this, shall we? So now little Ben Shapiro, y'all seen him on my thumbnail. He's a funny looking little character. Him and Candace been feuding for a minute. Now this is an interesting thing to me, y'all, because very few people publicly feud with their employer. Or should I say their employers be publicly feuding with them? Because it looked like that man was feuding with Candace. Mm-hmm. Kelly said they put you on top of the world as long as you disrespect your own people. Don't make them uncomfortable in any way. You know your position and play your position until they discard you. Well, I feel like this. We don't know whether they discarded her or what happened. So I can't speak on that. And Candace is still going to say whatever she wants to say. Candace still has a huge conservative audience. And um, I don't know. But they was they was um they was beefing. Wanda said she was on the Breakfast Club this morning, child. I ain't picked that apart. I'm just talking about the 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 ending of the relationship with the Daily Wire, her and Ben Shapiro. So apparently, they've been beefing a long time. They had something going on when they was disagreeing about the jab. You know, the the clock shot. Okay, during the the pandemic. They was disagreeing about that. You know, one had one take, one had the other. But it looked like everything reached a fever pitch. And I mean a fever pitch. When, um, I mean, that's cool that she talked about it, but I ain't listened to it, so I can't get into that. I'll go listen to it later. So they reached a fever pitch about this whole thing over there with Palestine and Israel. Fever pitch. Because, you know, being Shapiro, listen to the last name, Shapiro is uh, one of them peoples. You know, we don't even say their name because, you know, you can call black people out their name. You can call us crispity, crunchity, crackity coons. Um, shout out to Cat Williams. You can call us anything in the book. You can attack our women and our children. You can do whatever. But if you say anything about them people, baby, they ready to cancel your whole life. You won't even be able to buy water and electricity. They'll shut everything down. That's how they protect them peoples. But he one of them peoples, okay? So because Candace felt as though burning up, bombing, forcing uh, soldiers forcing themselves on women and killing up chilling and stuff was a bad idea, um, Ben Shapiro took uh, umbrage. He took offense at that. And he was at a gathering. It looked like a house party of some sort. And he was on the microphone. And it ended up going to social media where he said she was disgusting. And, you know, I mean, he, he really went in. Not disgusting. He called her disgraceful. So apparently it's disgraceful if you don't support, you know, the, the bombing and burning and barging in and forcing the soldiers, forcing themselves on women and little dead babies everywhere you know if you if you don't support that that is just disgraceful disgraceful and so she didn't know anything about it so she said until the next morning this is what she told tucker carlson because she went and did an interview with tucker carlson not that long but not that long after that went on and she told tucker carlson she ain't know nothing about it till she woke up till she woke up the neck that morning and it had done went viral okay and so she didn't say nothing ugly about him after that but that's what he did where she was concerned um and basically said that he didn't he didn't he he didn't state anything that he did that he disagreed with that she said he simply just called her names and she didn't want to engage in it so then they had another brouhaha online where she posted a scripture and a comment after the scripture. Ben Shapiro took to Twitter to quote tweet her tweet and say that if you feel like um, money is coming before your God, then just quit, like telling her to quit her job. Candace then quote tweeted him back and said, so now I can't even quote scripture and told him the Bible is not about you. I say, oh my, isn't that interesting? 
Uh-huh. I mean, calling the girl names. He he was doing a lot. I say, oh, they they mad. Baby, them other people that like to bomb and burn and, and, and take American money to do it and all that good stuff, they get angry when people don't agree with their crimes against humanity. I said, well, that's very interesting. Very interesting. But with all that being said, apparently um, her last broadcast, I think she knew it was because she um, gave almost like a farewell speech and starts talking about what she's not afraid of and that she, what she's afraid of is the only thing she fear is God. And, you know, now she's got this and Jesus that. And I don't personally recall Candace being particularly religious. I don't. I don't recall Candace Owens being particularly religious. Now, all of a sudden, it's God this and the Lord that and scripture this. And, and I don't know, but it feels a certain type of way. It feels like Candace is trying to do what we see um, athletes and rappers who become baby daddies do once the baby mamas drag them to court. Like they start trying to pimp the Lord our Savior. And I was a little uncomfortable with that. I was. I was slightly uncomfortable with that. So now she has no job and the people are, are trying to figure out because the rumblings are there that she may be planning to join Tucker, Tucker Carlson on the Tucker Carlson network because he's he has a network or is forming a network. So it's not just going to be Tucker no more. It's going to be the Tucker Carlson network. So there's been rumors and rumbling that she may well indeed join Tucker Carlson. Um, we, we do know she has the following and, um, it could be that others are saying she may be getting ready to do something independently. I'm sure Elon would be happy to partner with her like he did with Tucker so that she could still get her money. Um, I don't believe she's going to have a problem getting her money, right? Poetic lyrics. I ain't never heard her being religious or spiritual. I don't remember her mentioning the Lord at all. She, as a matter of fact. She says some very unsaved type things. Now, all of a sudden, you know, I'm not saying she can't, you know, that she could not have gone and found the Lord. Yes, they tried trying to pimp my Lord and Savior. That's what they be trying to do, Mac. Um, Trina say these people really get on my nerves. These pastors don't say anything Christian. <laughs> no, them, oh, you mean pastors in air quotes? These, these pastors don't say anything Christian. They get in trouble or say outlandish stuff. Well, the problem is she didn't say nothing outlandish. Now, I'm, I'm neither for her nor against her, but I'm going to tell the truth and shame the devil every day. Now, I don't believe she said anything that should have incited Ben Shapiro. I think Ben Shapiro is being a typical one of them people who cannot stand for anybody to not be okay with the atrocities that his folks oftentimes commit you know when it comes to those people we, we are put upon to pretend as though all the wrong they do ain't never wrong these are the same people who bankroll the transatlantic slave trade and if you mention it you being anti-semitic isn't that isn't that amazing isn't that just amazing isn't it isn't it something precious Mm -hmm. So now the new the new card is if you mention that the bombing, burning, beating, pillaging, R wording, child murdering, all that stuff going on in Gaza. If, if you say that that's not OK, then you are now anti-Semitic. It, it could not possibly be that you just anti-murder, bombing, burning pillaging, like maybe we just anti that stuff, like. Maybe we don't like it when nobody do it. But, you know, so I don't think she was wrong for saying that. I think she was absolutely right for saying that. I think anybody who's got a brain who does not worship Satan and drink his bath water is going to think that that's a bad thing to do. I think it's a bad thing to do. I wouldn't go do that to nobody. I mean, why would you do that to people? That, it seems a little, you know, wrong, a little sinister, a little evil. In the words of Preacher Pauly from Vampire in Brooklyn, it seemed evil, you know, evil. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have a problem with that. I don't. 
Sorry, not sorry. But, and I'm not trying to be funny, but yeah, poetic lyrics has an excellent point. It's just rather convenient. All of a sudden, once once she started feuding with Ben Shapiro, that's when the, the scripture started going up. And I feel like part of it is a flag that she's waving at part of the conservative audience because you know the conservative audience, a lot of them are evangelicals. A lot of them are clear people who call themselves Christians. I won't say that they are because I, I don't believe a lot of them folks represent my father at all. I don't even know if he talked to y'all, okay? But they claim to be Christians and they, you know, clear people who claim to be Christians and some of them, um, Uh, kind of fanatical and i think that some of them are actually the word that they call anybody who disagrees with their atrocities uh and i think she's kind of waving a flag to them i also think personally that part of the scripture writing and all that stuff was to provoke little ben shapiro and i think the purpose of that was to make him feel the need to respond so that she could make it an us against them thing. You get what I'm trying to say? I think she was trying to provoke him into a response. He was dumb enough to give it. And that was in order to invoke that flag from that base, from that audience that she has. The A lot of the clear people who call themselves, or what's the new word for when things ain't true? Identify as. A lot of these clear people who identify as Christians, you understand? And that was so when he makes a comment and she responds with the Bible is not about you. I think that was a loaded response. Cosmic Connection say, oh, Candace, next we're going to see a YouTube short of her shouting and catching the spirit in church. Child, if we see a video of um, Candace Owens shouting and cutting a step in church, I'm leaving YouTube. I'm telling you, that'll be my last day and you can put that on my mama and my daddy. She better not. You, you imagine seeing Candace Owens up in somebody's church shouting and speaking in tongues and, 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 and she better not. Andrew Max said, I'm not a Candace fan, but I respect her for being true to herself this time and standing her ground. I agree. I agree. I just found it, you know, I'm not going to say offensive, but I did raise an eyebrow that now the only thing I fear is God and, you know, God this, God that. Hey, T. Monique, thank you for being 121. I just found it to be very convenient. Thank you, Poetic Lyrics, for that word. I found it to be very convenient that now the Candace that we've never known to ever be particularly religious, Christian or otherwise, is now talking about the Lord. The Lord. I don't, I just don't remember it happening. I'm not saying it didn't. I'm simply saying I don't recall. Now, in another piece of news that I want to drop in y'all's lap, because you know I got to come back so we can review that bold and bougie show. But in another piece of news, I want to let y'all know something. The social media stuff where when people don't know things, they just make it up and they come up with all these wild scenarios and everybody just repeats it and pretends like it's true because enough people have said it and it gets your endorphins going. They're all excited because, oh, yeah, that's what's going on. I believe it. You know, mm -hmm. um, that lady, Kate Middleton. I saw the scuttlebutt on the internet and I didn't talk about it because I don't care about those people. And let me be very clear. I, it's perplexing that any American cares about British people running around with those strange accents, pretending to be royalty. And I do mean pretending heavy on pretending. Um, but while it's perplexing that Americans at all care about those people. 
it is beyond perplexing. Absolutely stymieing that, that black people care at all. It's disturbing that black people care about that. And I've literally seen black blogs carrying this story, making up all these stories, perpetuating all these stories about this lady, only for her to get on CNN. She's not going to any outlet that caters to black people. Those people don't like you. They don't care anything about you. The fact, if you're black and you care about a royal in Britain, I'm not going to invite you to drink a tall glass of bleach because that wouldn't be very nice. But I'm going to invite you to do some self-reflection. This lady, when it got on CNN, to talk to people who look like her, to tell them that she got the cancer and she was trying to get her treatment. And so now she's had to get onto media platform to expose her very public, her very private business. Hey, I'm that girl. What's up, sis? To the public. Cause people, people, is running around making up stories on this lady. She missing, she this, she that. Leave them people alone. Leave them people alone. Black folks especially, I'm talking to you. I'm going to say it three times because I wanted to get into your spirit. Let me act like Candace Owens. Three times. Leave them people alone. Leave them people alone. Leave them people alone. They don't care about you. They don't like you. They don't want you in their business. They don't give a darn whether you live in a dead. They made it clear. They let Meghan Markle come over there. She just got a little pinch of negress sprinkled on her. And they did everything but tar and feather her and string her up after Sunday service. Black people, stop this. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. The fact that y'all even open your mouths to call these people royals at all. You should be embarrassed. You should be embarrassed. Utterly and completely and thoroughly. Sorry to you, lady, about your cancer. I don't even know you. Sorry to you about your cancer. Cancer sucks. I feel I, I feel for anybody who got it, it absolutely sucks. I believe the devil himself invented it just to mess with people. But any black person calling these creatures royal. Again, I'm not going to invite you to drink a tall glass of bleach on the rocks. I'm not going to do it because mm -mm, that wouldn't be nice. But you need to do some self-reflection. The fact that these cretins these children of cave dwellers who managed to get some weapons from the Chinese and a compass from the Chinese and go out into the world murdering, stealing, spreading disease, robbing people who look like us to take jewels back to their homeland, calling them crown jewels like every piece of wealth they have is stolen from people who look like you. And you're calling them royals. And you're so awestruck. Everything about them, you want to know, see, I think this and I think, why do you think anything? about these people i'm not gonna ask you not why you're not wishing death on them i'm not gonna do that mm -mm. but at the very least you why are you not wishing that everything they have crumble why are you not wishing that they are not forced to return everything they stole to people who look like you the benin bronzes the diamonds the jewels the people the art why are you not wishing that their entire kingdom, if you can call it that, come crashing to the ground? Instead of sitting up, oh, we love Princess Diana. The hell for? What the hell for? What did you love her? What, 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 what is it that you love her for? See, this is the stuff that irritates my spit, like down my spine. When you sit up and you ooh and ah. Oh, 
over people who only have what they have because they murdered and stole from people who look like you. Could have been your granny for all you know. Because these are the same people. You know, they had a hand in a, in a lot of the kidnapping and human trafficking out of West and Central Africa too. Like, let's not pretend. But you sitting up, ooh, and then ah. over these people get your head checked especially when the ooing and the eyeing has pushed you to a point that y'all is on these blogs the blog owners and the people and the mental patients in the comment sections making up whole scenarios about these people as though you know them and you're so enamored by them and oh is she is she dead is she alive is she missing see they did this before and he was cheating on her why do you care what is wrong with you all the stuff you done made up is false wrong and egregious this poor woman has cancer i want her cancer to be healed bless her heart but I want every dollar they got to run out of their bank account. I want every home they own to crumble to the ground to dust. I want every jewel you got to go back to the ground you dug it out of. Every piece of artwork in your museum to go, to go back to every group of indigenous people that you stole it from. I don't wish nothing good on you with your ill-gotten gains. I don't care if your husband cheating on you. I don't care if you come up missing. I don't. Since you mentioned your cancer, I pray that you be healed. But black folk, y'all got to stop this. This is embarrassing. Say it again, Mac. Brainwash them good. Now, I can't tell you why it didn't work on me. I think I was glitching. I think some of us have glitch. It didn't work on us. But this, this level of being obsessed with people who hate you, have victimized you, continue to victimize you, is a problem. Seek help today. Seriously. Like, that, that bothered my nerves so bad. I didn't even want to say nothing, but I had to say something because I couldn't take no more. I couldn't take no more. Not a not not nothing else. Them people up there right now in Washington, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna shut up because y'all know y'all hate when I tell the truth about y'all's elected officials getting ready to pass a bill right now with 15 million dollars that they sent into Egypt for Egyptian college students to go to college on American dollars. Not that they're Egyptian and they in America and it's some kind of special grant, which that would be disgusting enough. But they send it for them to go to school over there. But nothing for your little black babies. And you up here oohing and on over a freaking royal. With all stolen property. I ain't even going to talk about what else is in that bill because y'all going to really get mad. Then you're going to be mad at me for telling it. But you might, y'all might want to watch them people that y'all vote for. That's all I'm saying. Election period coming up, y'all need to go check on the voting record of some of these senators and congressmen that y'all done voted for. These representatives and senators, y'all need to go check on their voting record. See what it is they voting on. Before y'all go running out here voting and then harassing other black folks on social media because we telling you we ain't going. Instead of harassing black people that's not going along with the status quo, stop for a second and say, hey, sis, hey, bro, how come you say you're not going to vote for that person? Ask a question. Stop being so brainwashed because this is getting silly. That's all I'm saying. The poor lady got cancer and y'all done took it to the whole nother level. And, and 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 to me, I'm sorry, but that's just silly. That's just silly. Okay. So now I'm finna let that go. Y'all know I got to come back. And so I got to go. So I can come back. So we can talk about that Carlos King show, Bowling Bougie. Um, 
notes is ready, but I do need to eat something. I ain't ate nothing. This bottle of water is all I've had all day. So I need to eat something. Okay. So y'all allow me to get something to eat. I'm going to go ahead and give y'all like, it's 430 here. Give me to like 730 my time and I'll be back. So like three hours, I'll be back. I'll meet y'all here. If you don't meet me here, beat me here. You know what I mean? But I appreciate y'all. I love you guys. And I'm going to go. So you know what I'm going to ask you? If you didn't hit the like button on the way in, but I hope you did, please hit the like button on the way out. Please, please, please hit the notification bell. Make sure you click on so you will know every time we go live over here on this good porch. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed because we're happy to have you here. Hit your um, join button beneath the video if you want to put your crown on and become a an official member of the royal family. We do have a lot of good things that go on. We have a lot of fun. We want you to be able to participate. Also, there is a membership link in the description box if your join button is not working. Also in the description box, we got the link for our royal family merchandise store. So you can get your crown gear and we got a link for our Amazon storefront so we can all shop together for our own each own homes all that stuff And we have my Amazon wish list in case you want to send a girl some snacks because I love a snack Okay, so listen, I'm gonna go but I'll be back and like I said, give me three hours Don't meet me here beat me here and we're gonna do our thing I appreciate you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great Friday if you drive and drive safe and remember, in case no one else says it to you, God loves you, I love you, and it ain't nothing you can do about it. All right? Talk to you later. Bye.